You know, one of the things that I think is really important is that children learn good, sound, basic nutrition and also good food preparation. And the best way is to invite them into the kitchen and let them enjoy the satisfaction of making some things. And so today I brought along two special guests with me, my two children, Christina and Kevin. Christina is six and in first grade, and Kevin is a seventh grader and is 12. And Christina chose a recipe to make today. And what's it called, Christina? A clam salad. Good. What have you got there? I got some lettuce and a pear half on top of the lettuce. Uh-huh. It makes the pear show up with the lettuce. It makes the color and stuff. Good. Would you like to show us how this whole thing goes together? Let's see if you can reach all this. OK. You take a spoonful of cottage cheese and put it on top of the pear. On the small end. And mothers, remember, if you can, and are buying canned pears to get the pears that are packed in light syrup rather than the heavy to reduce the amount of sugar. If you were to use a fresh pear, a little ascorbic acid powder would help to keep the pear from turning dark. OK, the cottage cheese makes the hair stick on. And what's the hair? Um, some grated cheese. And do you grate your own cheese? Yes. Do you have to watch out when you grate your cheese? Sometimes. OK, then you take some raisins, and you, you're going to do the eyes and mouth. Aha, uh -huh. OK. And um, can you make different kinds of faces? Sure. OK, that one's going to be a happy clown. Maybe, if that last raisin will stay on. Whoops. Why don't you make that one with just one raisin? OK. And now, then you take a strawberry and cut it in half right at the top. And have to be very careful, don't you? Mm hmm Keep your fingers out of the way. Do you sometimes go out and pick those out of the garden? Yes, we have a strawberry patch at home. That's right. And of course, clowns have big noses. And this one has an especially big nose, doesn't he? Yes. Now then you take an apricot for the ears and cut them in half. What other kinds of fruits could you use instead of apricots? Bananas, dried apricots, and other pieces of orange, maybe? Yeah. That's good. OK. Clowns have big ears and big noses, don't they? What would you use the salad for, Christina? Lunch or dinner. Lunch or dinner. Fun. Right, and it's got a lot of nutrition in it. And so this is Christina's clown salad. Thanks very much. Would you like a cloth to wipe off your hands? Kevin's one of those guys that has been cooking in the kitchen for many a year. And uh, I asked him what he'd like to fix today. And he said? I'm making a <coughs> orange breakfast shake. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin uh, plays intramural sports after school, and then he has to walk home. And by the time he gets home, he's ready for a little nutrition. Here, I'll put the lid on that for you. OK, what's it's got in it? OK, first it's got. Why don't you stand up? Okay. <laughs> First, it's got some orange wedges, and it's just peeled, and you cut it in small pieces, so. Why do you use a whole orange instead of orange juice? Well, it gives it more texture, and it's just, it just tastes better. And maybe it doesn't make runny. it as thin, right. And then you use an egg, and oh, yeah. Why do you put it in the cup first? Because, <laughs> well, I would make a lot of mistakes, and sometimes you get the shell in there. If you get the shell in there, it's kind of hard to reach in and pick it out. It's easier to do it in here. Yes, and he told me the other day he doesn't like crunchy shakes. Right. There you go. OK, then you use a half cup of milk and, of course, some ice cream. Uh -huh, is... These hot lights really make the ice cream soft. It's better if it's, if it's um, cold and hard than to get a thicker shake. The ice cream is going to do what for this shake? <laughs> How's that for a scoop, everyone? <laughs> one more. Oh, you think that's going to count as three? Mm, no, one more. more. OK. It, it makes it thicker and gives it flavor. And it adds the only sweetening, then, to yeah. the, the shake. 
And here's your lid. How much is this going to make? I'm just going to make two cups. I don't know about this one, though. This one may make more? Yeah. Okay, See, here. Let's put it on this, here. Um, there we go. There. Now, you want to pour it in a glass and show us what it looks like? This is enough for Kevin and a friend. Uh, what else could you use it for besides a nutrition break? Well, for breakfast or... Breakfast along with some peanut butter and toast might be awfully good. Aha, that looks great, Kevin. Yeah, see, it made two glasses full. There you go. You're going to try your own cooking here? I'll use this one. Kevin was three years old when he said, I don't like eggs anymore. And I go, oh, but you've got to have eggs. And so um, finally I said, OK, you make them. And so we went into the kitchen, and he learned to make scrambled eggs. And he thought those were the world's greatest eggs because he's a good cook. Kevin and Christina, thank you so much for helping me out today. And don't go away. There's dishes to do. And again, thanks, Virginia, for sharing with us. There are two criteria for judging when an adult's diet is well balanced, namely maintaining good health and keeping weight at the proper level. Children, on the other hand, should not remain at the same weight. They should be making consistent gains in weight and height throughout the growth period. Remember, growth periods do not always proceed at a consistent rate. They can go in spurts. If you are involved in the daily care and feeding of children, Take a little time out this week to evaluate the quality of your children's eating habits and how they may be improved. Thanks for being with us. See you next time.